In 1908, when the institution first opened, the man in charge bitterly complained to the state that the conditions were already overcrowded. These unfortunates are being deprived of their dignity and self-respect. Because only a very, very few seem to care. No way. way. Yes. It's time. We have forsaken them, not in the sense of what we have done to them, but because of what we have failed to do on their behalf. Actually, what we're trying to do is, uh, is degrade him to a certain extent amongst his fellows here. They uh, make fun of him then for a while afterwards, but I don't think there's anything inhumane about it or anything of that sort. Welcome to Pennhurst State School and Hospital, an institution with a complex history so grim it's known as the shame of Pennsylvania. Initially named the Eastern Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic, Pennhurst State School and Hospital opened its doors in 1908 and was envisioned as a ray of hope for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, providing them with the care and support they needed in order to survive. The institution's early years were marked by noble intentions. Families entrusted their loved ones to Pennhurst, believing it would offer a chance at a better life. It aimed to alleviate the suffering and isolation that often accompanied disabilities in an era when societal attitudes were less enlightened to the idea of people with these conditions coexisting in their day-to-day -day lives. With a place like Pennhurst, families could ensure their loved ones were taken care of in a place specifically equipped to handle individuals with these special needs. However, as the years passed, Pennhurst faced the harsh reality of overcrowding. The demand for its services outstripped its capacity, leading to increasingly cramped and inadequate living conditions for its residents. Unqualified and untrained staff were responsible for up to 40 patients per shift, far exceeding their ability to keep up with demand. This would often lead to patients being neglected or mistreated, further adding to the case against Pennhurst. Families and activists, deeply troubled by what they had uncovered, launched a tireless campaign to expose Pennhurst's injustices. The abusive, inhumane living conditions of the residents of Pennhurst were finally brought to the public's attention in 1968 in a five-part television expose by Bill Baldini called Suffer the Little Children. Some zoos in the United States spend more money for the daily upkeep of their large animals than the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania allows Pennhurst to spend on its 2,800 children. Five of the largest zoos spend $7.15 per day on their wards. Pennhurst can only afford $5.90. While the airing of the documentary resulted in some improvements, particularly related to the development of early community support systems, conditions at Pennhurst saw little to no improvement. In 1980, the pivotal Halderman v. Pennhurst State School lawsuit was filed, seeking justice for the residents who had endured unimaginable hardships within the institution. This landmark case played a crucial role in challenging the deplorable conditions at Pennhurst and ultimately led to significant reforms in the treatment of people with disabilities. The court's decision to favor the residents marked a turning point in the history of disability rights and care in the United States. Pennhurst officially closed its doors in 1987, marking the end of an era marred by controversy and suffering. Halderman v. Pennhurst State School not only exposed Pennhurst's dark past, but also paved the way for a more compassionate and just future for individuals with disabilities. Today, Pennhurst stands abandoned, serving as a haunting reminder of a dark chapter in the history of care for those with disabilities and the collective efforts to seek justice. Penhurst State School and Hospital's history is a complex and sobering tale, underscored by the legal battles that exposed its grim realities and unimaginable conditions. 
These cases were pivotal in advocating for the rights and dignity of individuals with disabilities, leaving an indelible mark on the ongoing struggle for a more equitable and humane future. Three years ago when I started the channel, one of the first places that I ever went to was Pennhurst. For me, this was my first real investigation. I got a group of friends together, we rented the place, and we experienced some really incredible things while we were there. Being so new to this at that time, I had no idea what to expect. I had no plan for how I was gonna approach this. I just went in blind, just kind of looking for activity. Over the course of the three years that I've been doing this now, I never would have expected to learn the things that I learned when it came to mental health facilities and institutionalization across America between the 1900s and the late 80s. I do want to preface this video by saying that this is not the first time that I've been back in three years. This is actually the second visit. I was just here about three or four weeks prior to the filming of this investigation with a couple of friends of mine, one of which you will be seeing on the channel here very soon. And we didn't film it. We just investigated, trying to give new experiences to mutual friends and show them Pennhurst. You will hear me reference talking about a previous visit and speaking of a young girl named Charlotte. So I just wanted to go ahead and preface now by saying that this is the second time I've been here in the last month. With that being said, we do start our investigation on the top floor of the Devon building. The first time I came here, I was told this was a very active spot and I wanted to see what kind of activity we could get with all the new equipment and new people. I don't know if you remember me from the last time that I came here, but I wanted to come back and visit you. I brought some friends here with me. We just wanted to come here and hang out with you and get to know you a little bit. Is Charlotte here? I came here about a month ago and I spoke to a little girl named Charlotte. She was very talkative. She liked to play with the devices in here and she really wanted to get out of here. Well, I told you I'd come back and visit you. I can't remember if you're in this building or if you were over in the infirmary, but if there is anyone here that knows Charlotte, if you could ask her to come forward and come talk to us for a little bit, that would be great. I'm just getting some little spikes here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been seeing it out of the corner of my eye. No, Charlotte's not here. I guess she must be in the infirmary. Yeah. Forgive us for not introducing ourselves. If you don't remember me, my name is Mike. I'm David. I'm Matt. Okay, is that it? Okay, there's two or three. Okay, we gotta wait for that. The train pass. Oh, the K2 just spiked. Oh, don't use the other one. Do you remember me? Can you touch that light if you remember me? There it is. Yeah. Nice. Did I talk to you the last time I was here? You can keep touching that as a way to say yes. Is this my first time talking to you? Yes, it's loud. Mm -hmm. I see it. Yeah. Can you touch that light down there, the green one, if this is my first time talking to you? Oh, so you want to touch that one? You like the red? Do you like the red better than the green? Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Like there's all kinds of movement out there. I'm hearing and seeing all kinds of stuff out of the corner of my eye when I look over there, and it's happening yeah. out there. If there's anyone down the hall or out in this room, can you come in here and come talk to us? You don't have to be afraid. We just want to ask you a couple of questions. Can you make some kind of noise? You can tap on something or knock or touch one of these lights if you'd like us to go somewhere else and talk to you. If that was you, can you do that one more time? Same spot too. Same we'll just to go that way. Yeah. 
Yep. All right, we'll go over that way for you. We didn't seem to be getting too much on the devices in here. I do recall hearing a lot and seeing a lot out of the corner of my eye, so did David, but as far as responses, they were few and far between. It was exciting to know that they remembered me from my previous visit. To me, that kind of indicated that maybe tonight was gonna be a good night and we were gonna get pretty decent activity. While things do start off slow in the beginning here, it definitely picks up as time goes on. The later we get into the night, the more we spread throughout the property, it just seems like there are pockets here that are insanely active. Once we got the confirmation of where to go, just based on the sounds that we were hearing, we decided to set up in one of the living quarters. Well, the noise you made earlier sounded like it was over in this area. If you're over here with us right now, we set out a bunch of different toys for you that you can play with. None of this stuff will hurt you. I'm sure all these lights and all this stuff is very confusing to you, but we're just trying to talk to you, that's all. Can you touch one of these lights if you want to talk to us? you just to help us communicate with you better hear your story are you feeling okay today Do you want me to turn off the big guy? Do the one. one. Alright y'all, big bright white light is turning off. Come hang out with us. For some reason, I just, I kind of had this feeling that maybe the overpowering lights were a bit too much and maybe it was frightening them. I don't know. I don't know if they can even see it from where they are or if it looks like a light for them. If it looks like something else entirely, but either way, I figured we would just cut the lights off or at least cut some of them off and try and dim the room a little bit to see if we could pick up more activity, maybe invite them out. And it definitely, it definitely did something. Is that a little better for you? Are you more comfortable with the lights off? I don't know if you heard me earlier, but my name is Mike. These are my friends, David and Matt. We just came here to talk to you, that's all. Last time I came here, you were very talkative. It seemed like you had a lot to say. And now it's not so much. I don't know if it's because I brought different people. Or maybe you're just not really feeling it tonight, but you don't have to worry about these guys. They're my friends. I would only bring you people that I trust who would never harm you. We come with the best intentions. Absolutely. Just want to learn about you. Just want to learn about you. Just want to learn about you. Do you mind making some kind of noise for us to let us know you're here? Four really loud footsteps. 
Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? No. It sounded like three or four really loud footsteps. four really loud footsteps. You're making a lot of noise around us. Can you come in here and talk to us? If you were a student here, can you touch one of the red lights? We just want to make sure that the noises that we're hearing are you. Can you just come a little closer and maybe, you know, you tap on the walls right next to us, or you can even tap us on one of the shoulders if you want. Someone's been touching me. Yeah. Yeah. Make it too just I thought I saw, but I wasn't sure. Are you okay with us being in here? Is that you over there? That was really amazing, thank you. Thank you so much. There's all kinds of movement and sounds going on around us. Everybody's hearing things and seeing things, oftentimes at the same time, and they really start to come out once we kind of set the tone and let them know, hey, we're not here to hurt you, we're not here to threaten you, we're just, we're here to talk. I do feel it is important to mention that Paranormal XP is sharing the site with us. They're on the opposite side of the property at this time. Nobody else is here. We've rented the entire location to ourselves, and it is being actively monitored by staff, again, on the opposite side of the property from where we are. The people that work here are very respectful of what we do and Paranormal XP isn't one to play jokes like that or pranks like that, at least not without telling us. I genuinely haven't heard a whistle that clear while doing this, at least not that I can recall in recent memory. And the fact that all three of us heard it, I mean, you, you heard it in the audio, it's so crystal clear. Saying you over there? Well, thank you. We appreciate it. I did ask you to whistle earlier. I'm assuming that's your way of telling us that you're okay with us being in here, correct? Could you do it again, just to confirm? It's a simple noise. Can knock or tap on something. Is that like right there? Yeah. Well, thank you. That would be some preliminary right there too. Mm -hmm. Yep. There, and I think that that way, right? Yep. Yep. We appreciate you inviting us into your space. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it means a lot that you would welcome us in like this. 
What's one thing you really like about this place? You can go up to Matt and tell him, if you talk into that thing in his hand, we'll be able to hear it later. Let's do it. Let's do it. We don't have a whole lot of time up here. We just want to play your song for a minute and give you a chance to talk to us. Do you want to tell us your name? Lay down. Is there any reason in particular why you're still here? <laughs> Was that you that made that whistle over there? friends here? <laughs> See, it's not like a no and then like a dash of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we gotta get going. It was nice talking to you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you again for allowing us to be here tonight. Really appreciate it. No <laughs> all right. Feel free to come down to the basement with us if you'd like to keep talking. We're here to talk to whoever's down there. We can just jab them in the hallway. About halfway through this investigation, we decided to trade members with Paranormal XP. We took Paige and they took David. We swapped buildings. We went down into the basement of Mayflower while they investigated Devin. I'm going to turn this device on for you. I introduced myself earlier, but in case you missed it, my name is Mike. I'm Matt. I'm Paige. We're coming from all over to meet you and talk to you and just hear what you have to say. Promise that we're not here to hurt you in any way or take anything away from you. We just uh, we just want to have a conversation. If you're okay with that, I'm going to turn this device on here, set it in this chair, and if you'd be so kind. Oh, wow. Hey, what am I, I told you. <laughs> you were not lying. No. Do you want to come over and talk to us for a little bit? If you do, can you come over and touch one of these lights, please? Cap off. Nice. Thank you. That's awesome. It was a meeting. Yeah. We're very, very responsive in here. Again. Seems that way. I was actually just here a few weeks ago. Do you remember me? Sound like shuffling? Oh, I heard somebody say yeah. No, I heard a distant voice too. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay, I was about to say, <laughs> hasn't stopped. Can you touch that if you remember who I am? No way. Whoa, nice. dude. No way. Well, it's nice to talk to you again. I know you like the sound of the REM pod. You confirmed that earlier. <laughs> Could you touch it again for us? I think it's crazy how that's going off, but the REM pod isn't. Yeah, it's wild. Because yeah. it would be in close proximity. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. Let me see. Yeah. So, directly over the cat ball, I'm already in yellow, like pushing blue. And. 
Ah, okay. Yeah. So you do like that toy. It's one of those LEDs, one of your favorite colors. Yeah. It's got green, yellow, blue, and purple. My favorite color is purple. Could you show me that color? Are you still in here? Can you touch one of those if you are? It felt very childlike in here earlier. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the vibe I'm getting now. Yeah. Thank you. Being kind of coy, <laughs> shy. Do you know who Charlotte is? No way. Just confirmed it. It's the first like actual confirmation device-wise yeah. that something just grabbed me on my hip. <laughs> um, that's the first device confirmation that we've gotten about Charlotte. Yeah. Since she was brought up. We've been asking about her all night too. So. Yep. Who is Charlotte? I don't know. Charlotte was, I'm assuming, a young girl that came through the last time I was here, about three or four weeks ago. Okay. Um, she grabbed onto me and a friend of mine and uh, just like wouldn't let go. He kept following us around the property all night. Huh? And she was very determined to leave with one of us, but we didn't let her. I told her when I'd come back. My visitor, like, tell her that her friend said hey and all that stuff, but I didn't know if she was actually here. I didn't know if there was actually a Charlotte, because we were using Spirit Talker. It was like a public hunt. Yeah. Um, that's the name that came through. We just kind of rolled with it all night, and we would get responses to Charlotte. Oh, and it seems like it is now. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Is Charlotte here right now? Oh, nice. Yeah. And you're saying it's childlike. Yes. That's that's what we got too. That was the impression we got. Oh. Wow. Nice to talk to you again, Charlotte. Dude, two for one. Wow. Sick. Look at that. Rim pod and cat ball. Thank you. Oh, it's like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> These cameras have microphones on them. You can come up to them and say whatever you need to say. If you have a message or a story or anything that needs to get out to the world or a loved one, we'll be able to hear you. They love the lights. Yeah, they really do. Are you glad I came back to visit you? Yeah. Me too. I told you I would. Sorry, I couldn't take you with me. Did you hear that? That was very clear. Yeah. Wow, dude. Sorry, I couldn't take you with me. Sorry, I couldn't take you with me. That was like a girl. Yeah. I'm, I, to me, it almost sounded like Somebody saying, please. Yeah. I couldn't make it out, but. Yes. Very cool. You have a music box in the other room, right? Mm-hmm. And it's on? Yep. It's been on this whole time. Charlotte, if you go in this other room here that I'm pointing at, there's a music box. You can make that play music. All you have to do is walk in front of it or reach out and touch it. Can you go in there and play that music box? She's like, no, I'm sitting right here with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. No. It's really cool though. Yeah. Direct. I don't ever see those go off that often in a row. No, no way. way.
Wow. Thank you, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. Jeez. Cat ball is still going, and now the REM pod. So exciting. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Man. That was crazy. That was awesome. Jeez. I don't even know what to say now. Yeah, I'm, I'm baffled. Mind blown. Yeah. Dang. When we initially started receiving contact from Charlotte, we didn't have any way to actually confirm if that was her name. The last time that we were there, when Charlotte first started to interact with us, we couldn't really get any device responses that would indicate that we were speaking with Charlotte. This was the first time since I had been back that we actually confirmed that Charlotte does exist. I know it's hard to take that for fact. It's definitely something that I too still take with a grain of salt because you never know who you're communicating with or what you're communicating with. This just feels very reminiscent to the Clarabelle situation from Forest Haven. To me, this feels like a child that is looking for help and is looking to get out of there. And they're doing everything that they can to make themselves known and let us know that they're not a threat, that we have nothing to be afraid of, and that they just want help. Who are you talking to? How old are you? It sounds like the same tone, it's almost like they're using the static as opposed to stations. Yeah. With like the same tone and response. Yeah. Every time, but I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to make out. Yeah. If this is Charlotte, we're having a hard time understanding you. Do you think you can go over and touch that toy just to confirm it is you that we're speaking to? Often, if at all, we get spirit box responses like this. It's the same tone of voice, it's the same sound. It's almost like the same person is coming through and knows how to communicate with us, but it doesn't sound like it's using stations. It was very strange, but everything made sense. And even though we couldn't hear it in the moment, it's very clear when you go back and listen to the audio recordings. How old are you? Yeah. There was one more spot in Penhurst that I was really eager to investigate. The infirmary wasn't available to us when we first went there. It was still in a very rough condition and it was closed off from the public. As far as I know, it was open to the public sometime last year and the energy in there is unreal. My prior visit here before this investigation was the first time that I ever went into the infirmary. Within 10 minutes, the emotion was just so overwhelming in there that I, I had to leave. I started crying and that's not common for me. Just from the handful of people that I've talked to that have been in there, they all say the same thing. It just, it hits you all at once. And it's just this overwhelming feeling of sorrow, just total sadness. I wanna say this is where we got Charlotte to interact with us the first time. I could be wrong, but I do believe this is where we met her. We wanted to do a dual Estes with one member of each team, just to see if either of us could give the team the answers that they need to make what's happening around us make sense. Do you see me, Paige? Hello. Hi. We can see you through the window. Which window? It's open. Richard. How long have you been here? Jackson. Amazing. 
I hear you. It hurts. What are you doing here? We just want to talk with you. Try to learn about you. Tell your story. Do you have any messages you want to God. No way. That's not very nice. Just here to talk with you. Something said Tara. What would you like with me? Would you like to talk to me? My name is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hey. Nice to meet you. I found him. Powerful. Who's powerful? Can you hit me? I'm sorry to hear that. Are you from the area? No, we're, we're from, from all area. over. In Maryland? You guys are all from Maryland? Yeah. Capital of Maryland. That's a ways away. Here, man. That was like Ooh, Capital, Capital, Capital. Do you like the toys we have laid out? You know, we have a bunch of them all throughout the room. None of them are intended to go to Canada someday. Well, Canada's really nice. Canada's yeah, sure. great. There's poutine. <laughs> I've never been. I haven't either. Canada's great. It's yeah, very man. beautiful. Yeah. I've heard. Yes. Lots they of all... trees. Lots of lakes. Any place in particular you want to see? Can you hear me? You we can. can. Can you tell us who's talking right now? No, Capo. Capo. Nice. Round two. Will you stop screaming? Is there anything we could do to help you? There were children. Were you one of those children? Get me out, Michael. Mm -hmm. It's not right here. You have free will. The loneliness. You don't have to be here. I'm sad. Can you tell us why? Not happy. Can you tell us why you're sad? Not happy. I understand a lot of bad things went on here. Did they have? Desperate. I'm choking. I'm sick again. I'm so sorry. Are you choking from the sickness? Is that maybe one of the symptoms that you felt from your sickness? In pain. During review, I noticed how casual everything was starting out. And it was very direct. It was asking about Canada, how beautiful it was. It just seemed like a normal conversation that you would have with anyone. And then it shifted. The tone completely changed and it started talking about the terrible things that were done to them in that place. And it's it's just so sad to think of what these people went through and the things that they had to endure while they were in there. I really do appreciate and respect the spirit for wanting to come forward and talk about this stuff. It's not easy. I'm sure a lot of them forget about it or want to forget about it and try to get as far away from it as possible. But, you know, sometimes in order to release things, you gotta, you gotta talk about it. You have to open up. And maybe in this moment, being able to discuss this stuff was enough for that specific person to move on. Thank you for listening. Of course. Thank you for communicating okay. with us. Can you tap Mike on the shoulder? Go to infirmary. You haven't even heard about the elementals or everything. Are there elementals here? Feel free to tell us about it. Ah. Is there something that is rough? Is there something that keeps you here? You just want to sit here? Yeah. What keeps you here? That powerful force. I need to escape. Is that powerful force that you were talking about earlier keeping you here? I need to leave. I'm desperate. Like Matt said, you have you have free will. Now. Get me out. You just you have to find to the walk. light. Once you find the light, you're free. Stop it. I'm 18. Who is 18? But Michael. Welcomes. He has something. Us with wide open arms. He must or we must go. 
I feel like a lot of this ties back into helping Clarabelle and Forest Haven. Ever since I discovered the attachment and contacted JD and Lisa and helped this small girl cross over, my life just hasn't been the same. I'm, I'm still trying to make sense of a lot of it, but ever since that day, activity around me, pretty much anywhere I go, it's, it's just all the same. It's constant and they're all seeking help and they all think that I can help them and do something for them. I would love to be able to help every single spirit, soul, energy that I come across, but it's just not possible. And I don't know enough about this to feel confident enough to try and help them. I'm sure that it's not difficult, especially if you put in the proper intention and you truly believe in what you're doing. I don't know, until I feel more equipped, I just can't take the responsibility of something like that in confidence. I just think it's incredible that they know. I don't know how they know. I don't know if I appear differently to them or if word gets around somehow but no it's just it's very comforting to know that i can go to these places and meet these spirits that are just looking for help and they're willing to talk to us and tell us their stories with him greater one he's good we can't this... go with michael yeah responsibility for all michael's not responsible for me for and you no no but you can Death. go, just not with Michael. You're not allowed to follow any of us in when we leave here. But we encourage you to find the light if you want to leave. We really want you to find I'm the light. I'm not going. Then you can stay here. We don't want you to have to be here anymore. Not so much happen. pain, so much suffering. It might be something. For now. Mike, you're listening. He is. So is Paige. We want to... Please help us. How can we Lost. help? Tell us what you need help with. Touch him. Isolated. Who are you trying to touch? David. Hi. <laughs> I want to touch you, David. Ah. Well... You're more than welcome. If you want to tap me on the shoulder or something like that, you're more than welcome to. I'm talking now. Keep on talking. Anything you want to tell us. We're here to hear it. I guess so. Avery or Avery? Avery. Who's blood? Piss off. <laughs> Enough. That's not very nice. Bad man. Who's the bad man? They hate me. Don't I, speak. I don't know why. Where is the bad man? Have you had... Number three? Power? And control over your life? Sometimes I feel like I do. Do you? Why come back here then? So we can he learn more it. about you. Is it not enough? Yeah. It's gone. But you keep looking. Where is it? What are you it's looking for? of what it once was. A message? Everyone's something. gone. I don't know. So who are you? Burn it down. to rubble. It seemed like somebody had stepped into the conversation at some point and asked us why we're there, what we're doing, and articulated very clearly how this place is just a shell of what it once was and there's no reason for you to be here and just burn it down. Would burning it down free them? Nobody knows. I mean, we won't know until Penhurst is truly gone one day. Get rid of it. But then where would you go? Tell them that. And go away. You think you'd be free if you burnt down? You listen good. Get to it. I'm grateful. We're so kind, we're thoughtful. Were you a student here? Are we speaking He's with the blind. Student? I was just a spirit, I guess, and like blind people. Hmm. Believe me. Stand up, you <coughs> Do you remember what age you were when you were brought here? I can see you. How is this possible? There's probably a lot of equipment you tell here. tell me. That you uh, can't see how it's really possible to use. You're probably just not used to it, but all of it's just to help communicate yeah. a little better. Can you you? All that hate yeah. takeover. Lots of people like to feel the sense of power. 
but it doesn't Too make many. them happy. Yes. Can you see me? That sounded really distressed. We can't see you currently. But we can hear you. We're looking though. Yeah. We would love to see you. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Can, can you hear us? Are you in the room here with us? You shouldn't. We shouldn't what? Yes. It's time. I said Paige. I'm fine with everything you said. What about Paige? Now please go away or go on. Being able to go back and compare my investigation from three years ago to now, it's just crazy to see the difference in the evidence that we catch and the responses that we get and really how intent and purpose makes a huge difference in how your investigation goes. I'm really proud of the things that we caught here tonight. I feel like the spirits here had a voice and they were able to finally share some of the pain that they've been carrying with the rest of the world. This place is constantly portrayed as some evil negative haunting or that there's all these evil angry things here and you should be terrified when in reality the most terrifying part about all of this was the fact that this place even exists. Penhurst holds a really special place in my heart and I'm super excited that we got a chance to investigate this together as a team and with Paranormal XP. We've been friends for a long time now and this was actually our first investigation together. They work super hard to create amazing content and they're just great people, very supportive, very caring and always giving back to this community. So if you really like what I do and you like my videos, be sure to check out Paranormal XP. I'm gonna link their channel down in the description below and you can also see a really cool walking Estes method that David got to perform when we split the teams.